I'm a Londoner um, of a certain generation. Um, and I didn't intend to be an academic. I didn't originally intend to be a filmmaker. My first love was music. Um, but um, this is how I ended up, a filmmaking academic who loves music. <laughs> There came a point where you had to make a choice um, uh, without fully realizing the consequences. But in my case, the choice was a friend of mine who was a producer, big time, said, I can get you a job as assistant director to John Houston, if you like. And Houston was perhaps the, um, you know, the big commercial Hollywood filmmakers, the one I most admired, perhaps. Um, but at the same time, um, I was offered a film of my own at the BBC, which was a documentary on music. Which do you choose? Well, obviously, you choose your own. And then you discover that actually that means that the paths have divided. You're now a documentarist. Um, the skill that you learn least of in an institution like this, and not because of our lack, but because of a series of factors like the fact that you're producing film, little films in a protected environment that's set up for you to do that, right? The skills that you most need, that are least taught, are those of a producer. And actually, if you've got a really good idea for a documentary and you think you can really deliver it, right, then what you need first is a producer. If you want to make the point that what you're looking at here, on the one hand, the August riots, and on the second hand, uh, Occupy, is something that's going on all over the place, and it has something to do with this regime of consumerism and so on and so forth, in brackets, right? But it's going on all over the place. Then the last section of the film should only be all over the place, right? You shouldn't mix it in with stuff that refers back. Oh, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Yes? Because obviously there's the stuff from Athens and then it goes to London, doesn't it? Right. Don't come back to London. Yeah, yeah. Once you've gone elsewhere, yeah, that, don't that's come that's back to London. Yeah. Don't come back yeah. to England. Yeah. Yeah. So that what you're and and pick on the shots which most clearly indicate that this is elsewhere. You've got quite a lot of them, right? They can be street shots. They can be that shot of the broken television in a window somewhere, as but you know whatever. But the point is, you know, then the film is clearly moving from here to there and then out there. Yeah. 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 yeah? Don't make that ending too long. I'm a 68er. I was on the streets in 68 in the protests then. Um, and I do not repudiate at all the kind of utopian, libertarian radicalism of that period. But it was defeated, wasn't it, in the long run? It changed things, but it was defeated in the long run, and in came you know, Thatcher in 1979 and neoliberalism and the level of politicization of the youth in general went down and down. The problem is what kind of political movement you can create which will begin to force power and authority to do something about it for their own sakes, for their own future, for them to save themselves. Give you an example in the 90s, middle 90s, I had um, as my own student at the college where I was teaching, although I tried to avoid teaching him personally myself, my nephew. But when he arrived, I sat him down and I said, Look, there are things about 
an institution like this that you have to understand. There are a lot of things good and there are a lot of things wrong. And um, when we come across things that are wrong, very often the management of the university won't listen to us. But if you students make a protest, they might be forced to listen. And he replied, come on, Michael, I belong to the generation of Thatcher's children. We complain all the time, but we don't do anything. Uh, I suppose, um, the, you know, the moment uh, of greatest pleasure that might be connected with launching a new film is actually finding a good review of it.